I get asked about affordable desktop limiters fairly frequently, and I have never had an answer to that search until now. Today, I am reviewing the Behringer Ultra Gain Mic 300 Audiophile Vacuum Tube Preamplifier with Limiter. This costs around 80 bucks. I did buy it with my own dollar dues, and I will throw some affiliate links in the description down below. I will list all of the recording settings in the doobly-doo as well as the lower third. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. What a surprise, you are going to get the preamp, you'll get the power cable, and a manual. Then as far as the build quality, I don't have any complaints about this thing. It has an all-metal chassis, it does have plastic dials, but they are very nicely attached. You'll find four buttons, a minus 20 dB pad, 48 volts phantom power, phase reverse, and the limiter. You'll find a somewhat limited meter. On the rear of the device, you'll find the power port, an XLR or quarter inch output, an XLR or quarter inch input, and if you care, this device is made in China. Then as far as the specs, the preamp offers plus 26 to plus 60 decibels of gain. The output stage ranges from minus infinity to plus 10 dB, and I believe unity gain is somewhere between 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock. It offers an impedance of 2000 ohms for the XLR input and one mega ohm on the quarter inch input. It offers 48 volts of phantom power. And here are some other specs in case you want to pause and take a closer look. As far as the frequency response of the preamp, take this with a grain of salt because I am new to this, but what I measured was pretty neutral, except for a quarter dB bump below 60 Hz and a quarter dB cut above 10 to 15 kilohertz. For all intents and purposes, that is negligible. You will not really hear that. Now, in order to really test out the preamp, I have connected the SM7B directly to the Mic 300. My gain is set at about 445, and the output level is set at about 330. On my meter, I'm hitting between minus 12 to minus 6 dB, so plenty of gain here on tap. I'll go ahead and shut up and let you hear the noise floor. And now in order to be thorough, I have increased the gain to 100% and I have also increased the output to 100%. So in theory, we are adding 70 decibels of gain to the SM7B. I am running that line level into the 2i2 third gen. I am peaking around minus three to minus one dB. I'll shut up so you can hear the noise floor and see if it's acceptable for you. Now, in order to understand the noise floor of the preamp, I have the SM7B running into the Mic 300 and the 2i2 third gen. I have level matched them as close as I possibly can. I am going to replace the 7B with a 150 ohm resistor, and let's hear the difference in the noise floor. Next, I want to test out the limiter. So I have the U87 running directly into the mic 300. Gain is set all the way down at plus 26 dB. Output level is set at 12 o'clock. The limiter is currently off. Now I have engaged the limiter to see if it affects the tone of the recording. If we're not exceeding any kind of threshold, I have turned the limiter off again. Do you hear any kind of difference? And for a second comparison, here is the limiter turned on when we are hitting a very reasonable level. Now I have increased my input gain to 9 o'clock and increased the output level to 100%. On my meter, I'm peaking between minus 6 and minus 3 dB. You should be able to hear a little bit of analog distortion because we are not yet actually exceeding 0 dBFS. 
if we engage the limiter, do you hear any kind of cha change in the tone? This is without the limiter again. And now I have engaged the limiter so you can hear if it affects any kind of recording in the analog realm. Now I increased my input gain to 12 o'clock. The output level is still set at 100%. And this is living very dangerously because we're peaking around minus 1 dB. If I get excited at all, we do exceed 0 dBFS and clip. Let me go ahead and turn on the limiter. Now if I get excited... You can hear it clamping down that level, and we do sound distorted because the analog preamp is overdriving, but we do not exceed 0 dBFS. Here is how it sounds again without the limiter engaged. We do exceed 0 dBFS sometimes. Hey, I'm excited! And now the limiter is engaged. Hey, I'm excited! Hey, very cool! Now I want to include a quick comparison between the Mic 300 Pre and the inbuilt preamps on a Focusrite 2i2 3rd Gen. So I am running an NT1 into a microphone splitter. On the Mic 300, I have my gain set at 10 o'clock. Output is set at 2 o'clock, and that runs line level into the Focusrite. On the Focusrite Mic Pre, my gain is set at 11.30 and I will have been switching back and forth between them, so you can hear if there is any kind of tonal differences between them. Chances are it's going to be pretty similar, although you may be hearing a bit more distortion out of the Mic 300. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. For 80 bucks, you really shouldn't be expecting much out of your analog tube preamp, but one thing you are getting is a bit of fun. And first up, as far as pros, the preamp offers a pretty good amount of gain where you get 60 dB on the preamp, and then you can add an additional 10 dB at the output stage. And I also like the fact that it has an analog limiter. That's the main thing that drew me to this device. And then as far as cons, I really struggled to get any kind of cleanish tones out of this thing. With my gain set all the way down with the U87, I still hear a bit of distortion out of it. I also wish the output dial had a unity gain marker so we know exactly where 0 dB is. And I also would love if they had an input meter so we could see what was going on at the preamp stage and an output meter so we could see what was happening at the output stage. That would make gain staging so much easier. So what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the Behringer Mic 300? As far as the overall sound, I didn't hear a massive shift in the frequency response. It didn't have a massive boost in the low end or a massive cut in the high end. 
What I did hear was quite a bit more distortion. As I mentioned, I really struggled to get any kind of cleanish tones out of this thing. It always seemed to have a bit of overdrive going on on the preamp stage. I also found it to be a bit on the noisy side, but to be fair, that's to be expected, especially when you're dealing with an affordable tube preamp. If that's what you're buying, expect a bit of noise. So as a general preamp, I don't think it's amazing sounding, but it's decent. It gives you kind of what you expect when you're looking at a tube preamp. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Behringer Mic 300? Kind of. If you're looking at this thing, hoping that it's going to turn your recordings into the analog gold of days long gone, I would say pass on it because it's not going to do that. If you're looking at this to give you 70 decibels of ultra clean noiseless gain and amplification, I would say pass because it's not going to give you that. But if you're looking for an affordable tube preamp that you can overdrive quite heavily, or if you're looking for an analog limiter, which may not be the most effective, but it is functional, then I would say, yeah, I kind of recommend it. Just know what you're getting into. You are getting into an extremely affordable tube preamp. Do not expect the greatest performance, the longest life, the best sound quality, the lowest noise, or the lowest distortion, because you're not going to be getting it. But if you're okay with that proposition and you just want something fun to play with, then yeah, I kind of recommend it. I had a ton of fun running a drum machine through this and getting a bit of drive on there. That's something I had never done before, and I really enjoyed that, so there you go. That's all that I've got for you today. I haven't done too many reviews of preamps, so if there is something that I'm missing in my tests, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll make sure to include that on the next review that I do. But if you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go to give me a thumbs up, hated it, big old thumbs down. These people are amazing. They support the channel at $5 or more and make buying gear to review possible. Thank you to them. And thank you to you for watching. I love you. I will talk to you in a week or so. Bye-bye. Whoa. Whoa. Boop.